Hey you, welcome back to the channel. And today I want to talk Andrew Yang and how great his foreign policy approach is. Now, I know that might blow some people away because the running idea has been that Andrew Yang has great domestic policies. But when it comes to the foreign policy arena, um, there doesn't seem to be much going on there with Andrew Yang. And at first glance, I pretty much agree with everyone else. I said that, uh, right, yeah, he seems weak in foreign policy, but everything else works so well. Maybe he can get people around him um, that uh, um, are good at foreign policy that can handle those things uh, in the areas that he might be weak on, right? Uh, we have many presidential candidates who've never been in the military, but just because they haven't been in the military doesn't mean that uh, um, they can't uh, be commander in chief, but what it's going to rely on then is a uh, good generals uh, over the uh, military armed forces to instruct them, right? And to give them the, the necessary information. So it's delegation of these things, you know, as it is. Uh, so why all of a sudden then am I seeing through a different lens that Andrew Yang's foreign policy may not be an accident, uh, how he's approaching it and why it might be a very good uh, way to, to deal with his foreign policy. Well, if you look back at, or, or, or let me tell you who Andrew Yang's approach is very reminiscent of for me. And that is uh, a situation like what we got with Ron Paul. So a lot of people start to like Ron Paul's politics because he would say common sense, logical things like, why do we have hundreds of bases in other nations, countries? We ought to get out of there, come home. That was Ron Paul's whole um, policy on, on, on those type of situations, right? Get out, come home. We don't need to, to be over there, right? Because by being over there, it's the first problem in foreign policy. <laughs> right the regime changes all of those the meddling that we've done um up until this point the counter effect of that is the problem with foreign policy right so you have to start there right you don't keep going on with a uh a a bad methodology and uh, approaching foreign policy and just going okay Let's try to uh, overlay a new plan over the crappy plan that we have before. No, you have to undo the entire thing, right? Ron Paul didn't say, uh, well, let's do it this way. Let's send uh, uh, a uh, uh, let's develop another plan on how to function amongst uh, these other nations in their lands and a variety of things. And uh, the meddling uh, in, in their in their local politics, right in their, in their countries, in their, in their elections, right the the propping up of uh, of puppet uh, rulers, as it were, all of that has to stop, and that's the part Andrew Yang gets that many don't get. Tosi Gabber gets it, of course, right, um, and uh, many as German men they say, well. Someone like Tosi Gap would either be really good for um, Andrew Yang's um, cabinet, you know, whether she be like a secretary of state or vice president or secretary of defense or, or whatever it is, whatever the case may be. I think she'd make a great secretary of defense, actually, because uh, um, it, 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 it seems Tosi's strengths are more geared toward military uh, presence in those regions and, and, and how for, from their point of view they look at it and the implementation of uh, the regimes and, and how to deal with the regimes right um, so in, in, in this way what I'm getting at then is Andrew Yang seems to be the candidate who's gonna undo the root causes of what's been the problem with foreign policy and, and, and the reason I'm able to kind of go there with this and I can point to it and see what what he's doing. If you look at Andrew Yang, right, he's a very smart guy, right? He's been a lawyer, first of all. There is no way 
possible that Andrew Yang has missed foreign policy, right? It's no way that he went in to be a president and put together all these domestic policies and somehow didn't think foreign policy was important. I don't buy it for a moment. I don't buy it. If you and I can sit here and figure out uh, what to do about foreign policy, do are we saying that someone who went to several Ivy League schools, been an engineer, a lawyer, runs successful businesses, are we saying that he hasn't figured that out yet or don't or doesn't think it's an issue or a problem? Somehow we're we're just so much smarter than him in that. No, what Andrew Yang is doing is he's doing the non-intervention policy, <clears throat> which is sometimes the best foreign policy you can do. <clears throat> also, what you have to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, what you have to understand with foreign policy is foreign policy is a dance. It's a game of generally something like sanctions, uh, treaties, embargoes, um, a lot of things that can come up when there are disagreements and action needs to be taken. But with all that put on the table, whether you're dealing with a foreign power that is just using many of the methods that you're using as a stall tactic to further develop their edge, right, or, or what have you, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, Andrew Yang has set it up that if it really gets to the point where, where a resolution can't be reached and we may have to come to something like a, 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 a military incident, right? We may have to come to war. He, he has very intelligently put Congress back in the power to declare war, right? Which, how, think about that for a moment. That is one of the most genius things he could have done because what that means is he makes this a decision for the country, right? You know, he makes this a decision that is put all the way on the country to decide as a country, is this what we really want, right? It's everybody's responsibility, and when Congress has that power, it's in our power to go check our Congress people and get them out of there if they're making the wrong decisions, right? Put the Congress people in there who are making the right decisions, but we make it as a country, right? There's no dictator or uh, hero of the Republic that just runs into this thing and decides this is what we do because they say so, Right. This these are this is great foreign policy, uh, and we're missing a lot of that. You know, we're we're missing a great deal. The best foreign policy is less intervention as possible, right? I'm not gonna go through this video on all of the governments we've replaced, leaders we've replaced, all of the coups we've staged, all of the false flag operations that have been done by the United States. I'm not going to do that in this video, right? But I can tell you, much much like the reminiscing back on Ron Paul's politics, which I liked very much. Uh, that was one of the, he was one of the uh, presidential candidates I, I liked a lot in his approach to those very things, right? On how to deal with these foreign powers, and Andrew Yang's approach is very similar to that, right? We can we can see that. I think it's we're creating a very false narrative to make the assumption that somehow Andrew Yang doesn't think foreign policy is important enough for him to study about it, learn about it and have a plan for it. He's done all that and he's come to the conclusion that this is the best plan. He didn't miss it. We missed it. He's come to the conclusion that this is the best plan. And it is because the more you meddle, the more you try to bring policies in and control these other foreign powers, right? It doesn't get less complicated. It gets more complicated, right? We're looking at nations like Iran, right? That some believe we're trying to find a way to go to war with Iran now. Now think about that. Iran, does Iran act like a country that wants to go to war with someone they've been 
constantly coming over here, trying to speak to universities, speaking to the American people to let us know what's going on, what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, those aren't really the actions. Same thing happening in Syria, right? These aren't the actions of uh, countries, foreign nations that just want to uh, go to war, right? And destroy America. And I think Andrew Yang understands all those things. And he, and he understands that one way to deal with this is stop the interference first, right? Uh, deal with our domestic policies. That strengthens America. And it makes us safer because it stops us from disrupting the sovereignty of other nations, right? In turn, they want to do business with us, right? They don't want to be so much in conflict with us, right? Uh, instead of trying to uh, be this power player over their heads in this world police, right? And I think that's been our first main mistake and issue and problem. And to undo that, you don't keep going down that same course, right? You have to get out of it. Sometimes the only way to get out of stuff is withdraw. Just get out of it. Just like when they pull troops out of countries, sometimes it just comes down to that, right? Where there may be some uh, some some damage in, in that process. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be less damaging to us, right? So this is why I think Andrew Yang's foreign policy is fine. Why well, I think it's great. And, and I, I would love to see somebody like, Tosi Gabbard, you know, uh, working with him in his cabinet to do that. You know, obviously as president, Andrew Yang is going, not going to be out visiting all these foreign countries doing foreign policy himself. He's going to send a secretary of state. Right. Um, and so we would we, love to have a great secretary of state, a great uh, person, you know, in that cabinet who can uh, who, who can do those things yet yeah, do those things under the same ideologies of what the Yang administration sees for this, right? You know, so, so this makes us safer in the world. His foreign policy, I believe, will make us safer in the world. Whereas, if we look at the foreign policy we're dealing with now, do you feel safer? Do you feel safer with trade wars with China that's destabilizing us economically? Do you feel safer with possible wars with Iran? Uh, you know, um, you, you know, many of us want to peacefully coexist. So we're not interested in the bravado of if, you know, you're getting picked on, if the United States being picked on or uh, taken advantage of, like, you know, kids at a, at a high school uh, park someplace. Um, you know, this, this is serious business here and, uh, every decision we make will have a, uh, a result, right. In, in effect. And so we want to always make the ones that are the more advantageous to us and create them with less collateral damage. Uh, but that's all I want to say in this video, guys, tell me how you all see foreign policy and what are the most important aspects of foreign policy. I know Tosi Gabbard was saying something, uh, like she believes that, on the Joe Rogan podcast, she was saying something to the effect that she believes that we we could go into nuclear war again. And, um, you know, I grew up back, you know, back during the 80s um, when, you know, we were in the cold, you know, and it was still the, 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 the arms race with Russia and the United States. And, you know, the concept of um, a nuclear war happening was very real, you know, to us. And today we tend to think of nuclear war like it couldn't possibly happen. I'm, I'm more along the lines of nuclear war happening will probably be accidental. But I, 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 you know, I would like to believe advanced. Well, maybe I'm jumping the gun. I was going to say advanced civilizations like China and the United States, <laughs> uh, you know, would you have to just come to the conclusion that it's illogical to just start firing nuclear, you know, weapons at each other and destroy each other, right? And nobody's going to, you know, be the victor in that, right? It will probably, it will probably be best to let, if it came to that, right, it might be best to let somebody get a little bit of the upper hand on, on trade wars or something like that. But, but whatever the case is, um, and her idea, it was that, 
nuclear war would arise, you know, become the most dangerous, you know, thing to face. Right. And, 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 and so um, that's one of the main driving ideas of her foreign policy, that huge threat of World War Three, nuclear war, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I, I find that interesting to think about, but I'm going to let you all think about, tell me all what you all think about that. Uh, tell me what you think about Andrew Yang's foreign policy. Let me know if you now see it from a different light or you, you still feel fine, have different ideas about it and a variety of things. We'd love to hear about them. Uh, also a quick reminder, we'll leave a link in the description. We've got some uh, prizes, uh, in, um, a prediction, um, a game we play a series of polls and statistics around the world. But, uh, we did one at the start of the week called is Andrew Yang too nice where you can upvote, uh, or rather you can vote if uh, Andrew Yang is either too nice or not to be president upvote Monday. will tell you who the winners is and whoever voted in it will get a prize. Uh, if you, if you, uh, if the more, more people voted, you know, that in favor that, um, he was too nice or not too nice, but we'll leave a link in the description and until next time guys, take care.